namaste and welcome to day five of your five-day training can you believe we have already come to the final day and if you're joining us today maybe for your first or second day please don't panic the videos and all the content in the facebook group will be up through end of the day on monday so you have plenty of time uh Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to review and go through anything you may have missed. So it'll all be there. And the training content is all in the guides tab. And I also just wanted to say that I know it's, for some of you, it's tricky to find the guides tab. <coughs> and that's because Facebook doesn't make it easy to find on the mobile, on mobile or iPad. But if you go, if you log into the group on your desktop, or on your laptop, then there, right under the photo of us, you'll see the guides tab, and then every training day is organized there by day, and you can just go through. You can even push done. Let us know that you've completed that lesson. Um, so that's how it's all organized. So it's been such an honor for us to witness so much unfolding and so much really wonderful progress and deepening in such a short time together. So let's just do a brief recap of everything that you have learned so far. So in day one, you found your home. So you found your Sa for this training. You learned how to play a beautiful drone of Sa and Pa, the two most important swaras that create the foundational drone and sonic tapestry of everything we sing to and with. And you also learned how to sing and play five out of the seven swaras, sa re ga ma pa. And you learned an exercise to get you more fluent with the swaras and uh, playing them on the harmonium or the keyboard. And then in day two, learn the melody. You learned the melody for the Sri Ram, J Ram, Kirtan that you've been working on this week. And you learned how to sing it in Saragam and how to play the notes. And you learned how important melody is in music. Yes. And then in day three, we talked about and shared about the deeper meaning of the lyrics and the Sri Rama and, um, and what, who, who and what we're singing to and the energies of that, uh, those deities. And... Um, you also learned more about pronunciation and you sang the kirtan with the lyrics. And then in yesterday's day four training, you learned how to play something called dyads, which are two notes played together. So it's an extension of the drone, like the sapa drone is an extension of that. And it's also the foundation for harmony. Yes, exactly. So it's a building block for those of you who may go on later to learn how to play chords. Um, and also, but also dyads have a beautiful simplicity and texture of their own because they're not chords. And so they have some, there's some more openness in them, actually, um, that we love. So that's why we love to teach dyads as well. And it's also an accessible way to sing and play if perhaps playing each individual melody note is challenging for you, then you can get going singing and playing with a devotional mood with the dyads pretty much right away. And everybody's different. Some people, the melody is a lot easier because you have those guidance, you have that guidance for your ear with, with each individual melody note, right? So you can align your voice. And for others, the dyads are wonderful because they feel they're easier to play and the melody is sort of more ingrained in their ear. So everybody's different and learns differently. So we try to accommodate that. And then today, in day five, today is called Put It All Together. So this is where all the pieces that you have learned come together and come alive with rhythm. So I think we mentioned this in the training video as one of our very dear friends and super accomplished, amazing musician says, time is the essence of music. So when you put the kirtan together with the rhythm and we taught you a really fun groovy very common indian rhythm used for kirtan and bhajan called keherva so please try saying that keherva keherva tala tala keherva tala keherva tala so and i just want to say uh, um 
I had forgotten actually yesterday that we were going to teach rhythm on day five, and so I played the tabla yesterday and I answered some questions about uh, about the um, I tabla, and that's why there was no tutorial in the um, in the training. Oh, I see. I see. Because it was posted today. Because we haven't taught it yet. Yeah. So okay, but that's cool. Got got a, they got a preview of Kehelva already. Yep. So there's this word in Indian music that refers to cycle of time and also to rhythm, and that's called tala. Let's say that tala. 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 So you, you want to have that nice dental sound uh, where you take your tongue and put it behind your top front teeth. Like, like try saying the word thimble. Thimble. And notice where your tongue is when you say thimble. Thimble. It's behind the top front teeth. Now, in that same position, in that same position, say tala. Tala. The nice long ah, oh, tala. Tala. Yeah. Nice. So tala means rhythm cycle or cycle of time in Western music. That's equivalent to time signature. And it also refers to rhythm in general. And so we taught you a, um, a rhythm called keherva tala, which is a, it's counted as four or eight beats, depending upon the context. And it is uh, perfect for a 4-4 time cycle, 4-4 in Western music. And today in day five, you also play the kirtan in multiple tempos. So as probably many of you are familiar in kirtan, we typically move through some different tempo changes. We might start slow, go to a medium speed, go to a fast speed, maybe even faster and faster, depending upon the kirtan and the style and the context. Um, and maybe some people get up and start dancing, and so we want to keep the support going for them so they can keep dancing and keep bumping it up and, uh, and then bring it back down in, uh, to a, back to a slow tempo to end, ideally in a graceful way, but even if it's a crash landing, that works too. However you get there, you get there. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, safest, safe, <laughs> safest crash known. Yeah. And then we go into a few moments of silence after the kirtan so that everybody can rest and really uh, feel and deepen into the resonance that was created <coughs> by the singing and the chanting. Okay. So um, let's... Uh, Let's do our short centering and ohms. And today for the centering, if you would like to play the drone with me, you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to play. I'm going to play pa and sa together. Will you show my hands? Mm. And we're going to ohm with our beautiful drone. And if you happen to be a yoga teacher interested in bringing chanting and harmonium into your class, this is a beautiful way to just open your class with three ohms and provide some sacred sound for people to attend to, focus on, and relax with. Interesting. And align their voices with, and so that the ohms are very resonant and um, united on one pitch. So wherever you're at, just check your posture. If you're pumping the harmonium, check that you, you don't have any unnecessary leaning forward or to the side. and You're still able to keep your spine upright. And then settle into stillness other than the pumping. And close your eyes. Notice the texture of the sound and just invite the sound to come into your body in the same way that the breath comes in. In fact, you can just imagine that the sound is riding the breath into your heart, into your body tissues, filling your body tissues with resonance and presence.
Feel the calming quality of the resonance as you breathe. And also notice the alerting of the moment by moment vibration. I want you to put your attention at the end of your exhale. Just notice the quality of the end of your exhale. That, that place in the breath that represents completion of a cycle. That is the, also the representative of disillusion. And also notice how the end of the breath is inextricably woven into what is next, what's to come. And so literally, literally every breath teaches us that, that every end is a new beginning. I just want you to breathe into that feeling and, and notice how scintillating and inspirational it is to, to realize that. Even if you intellectually already know it, see if you can feel it in your body. Take a moment to internally celebrate your success, your completion of these last five days and to, to open yourself to the feeling of excitement of what's to come. Okay, let's, let's join our voices for three ohms. Inhale. If you like, please bring your hands to your heart and bow your head. And gently look up if your eyes are closed. Welcome again. This is one of my favorite parts of the training, uh, precisely because of what our friend says, that time is the essence of music. And in the same way that we can um, always improve our ability to tune our notes, to tune our voices to some note, to some pitch, we can also train our ability to lock into a beat or a rhythm and to play and sing in time. Mm -hmm. So the rhythm cycle that you're introduced to this week is called Keherva Thala, and it comes from North Indian music. And as we teach about in today's videos, <clears throat> in this tradition, reciting the syllables of the rhythms is how the rhythms are learned. Mm -hmm. And these syllables are called bowls, and bowl, bowl means to speak. And the bowls represent the strikes on the North Indian drum called the tabla, which is the most common instrument used to accompany kirtan, but there's also other percussion instruments like the kol, and the dholak and the mridanga, 
uh, that are also used in, in, in Indian music. So in the same way that in the sargam system, we have naming of tones, sare gamapa, for melody, uh, the rhythmic system uses bols to name percussive sounds. So let's take a little look at keherva and do some practice with reciting the bowl so we can learn the rhythm and train it and then be able to play with it and align with it. So you can see on your screen that there are eight uh, bowls for every four beats of keherva. Okay, and you see eight beats total. So notice there's eight beats, but after the fourth beat, the whole cycle repeats. You got one, two, three, four, and then beats five through eight, the same cycle repeats. So again, eight bowls, dha, ge, na, ti, na, ka, din, na, for every four beats, and then that repeats again. So on your iTabla Pro app, <clears throat> which is probably the most common app people use, it's for iOS devices, um, it's, it's listed as an eight beat cycle. So the set of bowls repeats twice through. And we count it as four beats per, per measure, or four four time, as it's called in Western music. So repeat after me. Dhage. Dhage. Natti. Natti. Nakka. Nakka. Dhinna. Dhinna. Dhage. Dhage. Natti. Natti. Nakka. Nakka. Dhinna. Dhinna. All right. Now let's listen to the sound of the, the app playing the beat. And the app is wonderful for when we don't have a tabla player, but I, obviously, ideally, you have a tabla player that can, that can play with you or, or a different percussion instrument that can play something similar to this groove. Now, uh, while Brent's setting that up, I want to tell you, this is like a um, basic framework for the groove or for the rhythm. And a live tabla player or percussion player, cold dholak player, they will embellish this. And they may, may leave out certain syllables or embellish certain syllables a little bit more. Yeah. And you even hear it on the app. There's a couple extra strokes you hear on the app. Mm -hmm. And even on the app, you can set different um, variations of keherva. So just want to get that in your mind. There's many variations of keherva. But this will always, you'll always hear this kind of groove or in other... Um, cultures of music it's called a clave right that clave is always going and it's always um you can feel that clave or that groove even it might be embellished even though it might be um some notes pushed and pulled a little bit it's all in the groove is still happening in the background So I would like you to um, either clap or beat your hand on your, tap your hand on your um, table or your lap with us and we're gonna recite. <clears throat> we're gonna just count to four because as I mentioned, it's eight beats but it's four repeated twice. So we're gonna just count it in a four beat cycle for the sake of simplifying it. And we'll recite. So listen first a couple times and then please recite with Brent and I. Dagena. slower and also faster so let's go quite a bit slower and just feel what the groove is like at a slow pace and interestingly I have found it's actually it can be harder to entrain oneself to a slower tempo than to a faster so sometimes slowing down is like a really great practice for the nervous system because it forces you to slow down <laughs> and pay more attention to the distance between each beat. So let's try that. So this is 40 BPMs we're working with right now, beats per minute. 
Now listen and clap with us and really try hard not to speed up. Stay steady. Now let's recite. Here we go. Dagena dina gadhinna Dagena dina gadhinna Dagena dina gadhinna Dagena dina gadhinna Great. Now at this slow pace, we're going to recite the lyrics for the kirtan. Okay, we'll recite... Then we'll go to a medium speed, do the bowls, recite the lyrics of the kirtan, and fast. So at this slow speed, the lyrics will be slowed down, of course, to align with the tempo. Now, type into the chat, please, which beat of the tala does the kirtan start on? Tala is the rhythm cycle. So which beat of the tala, which beat of the cycle, does the kirtan actually start on? Does it start on beat one or does it start on a different beat? Does it start on beat one, two, three, or four? So Joaquin Good and students. Gabriella and Hannah say, oh, Sky say four. Sadhana says four. Yeah, that's Good. right. Gauruji Dhinna Kani. Good, yes, that's correct. <laughs> Those are all correct. So, yes, yeah, starts on beat four. Now, on your app, <coughs> you'll notice that on the screen, when you let the app run for a minute, on the screen flashes the numbers of the tala as it goes by and the syllables, and it goes to eight. I think you have to have that setting on. Okay, so maybe you have to turn that setting on. But in any case, there's a tutorial video that will take you through all those steps. So if you're working with the app, you know that the cycle repeats on beat five through eight is a repetition of beats one through four. So you can also start on beat eight. In the app, which is essentially beat four. Yes, in the app, which is essentially beat four, right? So you can start on beat four or you can start on beat eight. It actually doesn't matter which one you start on because the four beats repeat and that makes the eight beat cycle. Cool? Mm. All right. So now we're going to start by reciting the um, keherva, the bowls. Um, <clears throat> slow like this, then we'll start, Brent will switch to speaking the numbers of the beats as they go by, and I'll speak the lyrics for Shri Ram Jai Ram. We're not going to sing them, we'll just speak them, okay? Let's do it. So, go over that one more time, so all together bowls. All together bowls. And then at some point I'll switch to just the numbers? Brent will switch to just a number so you can keep track of the numbers of the beats and I'll switch to to speaking the lyrics. Okay. slow tempo you probably won't start the kirtan that slow that's quite slow so let's go to a tempo that we actually may start at maybe like 60 mm -hmm. okay so 60 is probably a good starting place to start this kirtan it's not too slow you can even do 55 if you want to go and it's a good slow tempo but not too slow 40 is probably too slow but i just wanted to give you that feeling of really slowing down 
takes a lot of focus. Okay, let's do, what, do 60. 60. Okay, so we're going to do the same process now. We're going to recite bowls, then switch to lyrics. And when we switch to lyrics, remember, the kirtan starts on B4. So it'll start... Dhage na ti na ka om shri ram jay, right? Okay. So now everybody with the bowls. Two, three, here we go. Dhage na ti na ka dhinna. 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 Dhage na ti Probably where in Kirtan we move through multiple tempos, roughly slow, medium, and fast. Okay, so now we're gonna bump up to like a medium tempo. Let's go to 75. Okay, 75, cool. So we're gonna go 15 BPMs more. And if you're singing and playing with your, your app, you can just push your plus five three times and then you're at the new tempo. Or ideally, you're with a live drummer and you give them a nod, give them a look, give them a heads up, right? And then just go to the next tempo. Just start the next tempo right away. So typically speaking, it's not a gradual arc in Kirtan. Some styles, it's like that. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> the way we sing usually is we start at a, a medium tempo, slow tempo, keep it pretty steady, then bump up 15, 20 BPMs. For the live drummer, same thing. We'll bump up to that next kind of medium speed. And you just feel it. And then just start. It takes a little practice, but you can practice with a live drummer and have them help you too. And tell them, you know, like, I want to practice my tempos and my cueing and like help me, like tell me if my cues are clear and my rhythm is strong. Like they'll help you if you find a good drummer. It's worth it. Even if you pay them a little bit of money to spend an hour with you and practice with you, it's really worth it. Someone more experienced than you, ideally. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna do public kirtan, so then you bump up to that medium speed. You just start, and then you just go for it. So let's go up to that. Let's go up to like seventy-five BPM now. So here's our pulse. Dage nati nakadina. 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 I'm 
gonna give, so we're gonna do this fast speed, then we're gonna end. I'm gonna give Brent a cue when I wanna Let's do end. One more though. Let's go up to 120. Oh, excuse me. We're gonna do, okay. Two more. This one and one more. Cool. And then, then the cue okay. to end. Cool. So there we went through five tempos. We got up to twice as fast as we started. We did. So wide range, you can sing this kirtan in. And then we ended. So let's pause here for questions before we sing and play the kirtan in multiple tempos all together. Okay, so Hannah says... I have a challenge with rhythm, and I was having a hard time singing along with Keherva with eight beats. Does it mean I can slow it down and use it as four beats? <clears throat> mm. Okay, um, Hannah. <clears throat> well, I, regardless of what tempo, whatever tempo you set it, I, I want you just to think about it like four beats, no matter what tempo it is. That's what I was going to say, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to think about it like eight beats. Um, just think about it like two sets of four. So yes. each, each, four is equiv each four of Kaherva is equivalent to one measure of the kirtan. Mm -hmm. So um, each beat has two parts. Da, ge, na, ti, na, ka, din, na. Da ge na ti na ka din na. So there's a down and an up to every beat. One, two, three, four. Da ge na ti na ka din na. Cool. Yeah. So then in the sargam, so will you throw up the first line of sargam, Brent? Yeah, sure. So you see in the sargam notation, line one, for example, you could put it on my face. Um, you have sa out there by itself. That's that fourth beat. Oh, over here, sorry. <laughs> so you have that sa out there by itself that you that starts on that fourth beat. So the fourth beat of the cycle, thank you. The fourth beat of the cycle, sa takes up that entire fourth beat. Dha ge na ti na ka sa. Sa takes up dhinna. Then Ga, 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 ma, ga. Let's do exercise real quick. Brent, mm -hmm. you recite Keherva. Okay. I sing the Swaras. Sounds so you good. can see how the Keherva Tala maps right onto the Swaras. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so Hannah, did that clarify anything for you? And yes, you can slow the tempo down. If you are finding, here's the rule of thumb when you're practicing, if you're finding that you're making mistakes in the playing, however you're playing it, whether you're playing dyads or notes, melody notes, however you're playing and singing, if you're finding that you're making mistakes at the tempo that you're playing and singing in, then reduce the tempo, go slower, stay in time if possible, right? But just go slower until you can play and sing easily, and so without undue strain or tension, and also without making mistakes. Then start from that tempo and start bumping up maybe 10 BPMs at a time, and then build your speed that way. So when you do that, you play in time, slow, in time, without mistakes, your brain learns what it's like. It gets ingrained, wired into your brain with time and correct notes mm -hmm. together. Then from there, you can increase it. If you start off in some other way, then it gets wired in funky and then it's harder to correct it later. Yeah. So that's a rule of thumb. When you're first learning, you can just play without the rhythm, without the tabla. Just take your time, figure out the fingering, you know, go really slow mm -hmm. without time. But then once you're like, okay, I know where the notes are. I know what I need to do. I know how to sing it. Then go ahead and put the tabla on, the tambura on, and play with that. Slow, like I said, and follow the process I just outlined. Great. Okay. Any other questions or comments or thoughts? You're welcome. Isn't it fun to recite the, the rhythm? It's so fun. And this one has a, um, a, really, a really fun um, pun joke in it. If you're ever having a trouble remembering Kehervatala, just remember doggy naughty not get dinner. Doggy naughty, not get dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. All right, so are we ready then to... Okay, we'll see you soon, Karen. Oh, and I just wanted to say um, also, we're going to do a surprise pop-up Kirtan mm. live stream tomorrow to celebrate the ending of the group and to tell you live in person about ways you can continue working with us if you so would like to and ask questions. Um, about uh, what's coming ahead. So that will be tomorrow, same time. Same time, same place tomorrow. We're just going to extend the live stream one more day. Mm -hmm. There won't be training videos tomorrow, but um, the group will be up again through Monday. You can review content, go through things. You can ask us questions tomorrow as well and in the group yeah, we'll, as well. We'll be looking at the comments. Yeah. And, and all weekend. All your videos that you post, we'll be checking yeah. it out. So feel free to continue. If you haven't had a chance to post a video of your practice yet, do that any time through Monday and we'll get to it. And if you have any issues with your harmonium or you're not sure, a couple of you have posted like, I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to sound, can you please help me? And then we can help you um, to make sure that you're starting with the correct knobs that are in or out and there's no funny sounds happening in your harmonium and you know, you're, you're clear about just getting a tone and playing and confident about the sound that you're creating and you're pumping. Mm -hmm. So those basics, we want to make sure that you leave this group with all those basics in place. So you can post any of those questions or videos all through Monday. All right. So we'll see. Hopefully we'll see some of you back tomorrow if you're free Friday morning, 10 a.m. Mountain right here. <laughs> okay. Shall we sing? Yes. So um, let's now sing and play the kirtan all together. And we're going <coughs> to go through slow, medium, and fast tempos. And then... At the end, when we're ready to end, the rhythm will end and we'll finish with, with one time slow, out of time, with no rhythm, to end the kirtan. And this is going to mimic the arc, um, a common arc for playing kirtan. Okay. <clears throat> when I play the harmonium, I am going to first play the melody. I'm going to play the kirtan with the melody note several times, and then I'm going to switch to the dyads. The drone, sapa drone. Should I do the drone first? No, no. From melody to okay. drone. Okay, so I'm going to go from melody. Then I'm going to just play Sapa drone and sing. That's kind of an intermediate step between the melody and the dyads. 
Then I'll play dyads. And then at some point, you'll see me actually add some melody notes to the dyads. Okay, so that's sort of like the, <clears throat> the fourth sort of, <laughs> there's like three plus one. So that's like that fourth kind of step that after you are comfortable with uh, melody and dyads, then you kind of naturally can start to interweave them a little bit, to put mm -hmm. some melody notes into the dyad. So I'll demonstrate that. <clears throat> and I'm not going to start speeding up until we get to the dyads. So we'll, we'll do the melody at 60 BPMs. And then we'll switch to the Sapa drone, sing the, mel sing the kirtan over that, still at 60. Then when Sheila starts moving the dyads, then we'll start speeding up the tempo. And we'll go through several different tempos. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I'm playing, I like to hold saw down as um, the count off happens. So let me just stop for a moment and explain myself. So if you're playing with a live drummer, you as the chant leader, kirtan leader, will begin the bhajan, will begin the kirtan, right? Om Shri Ram Jai Ram. And then I, face please. And then I give a cue to the drummer when I want the drummer to come in and start, tabla player, whoever it is, to start accompanying me. But I start it. If you have a live person playing with you. If you're playing with the app, however, typically speaking, if you're just by yourself, you, you, you have to, well, there's two ways to do it. One way is to start the app first so the rhythm is going. That's how you'll probably do it in practice. The rhythm is going already. And then you count to yourself, right? Identify where one is or recite the bowls. And if you've memorized them, then you'll know where to come in on beat four, right? So you'll feel that. And while I'm feeling where I am in the cycle so I can identify where I come in, I just hold saw down. Or hold saw and paw down. And then just feel and then start. Right at the right place in the cycle. Beat four. <clears throat> would you like to start alone or would you like the tabla to start? I think tabla can start. That's okay. fine. That the app can start first. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. So here's dhage na te na ka dhinna dhage na te. Next round I'll start. It's there. Oh, there. Let's use that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me make sure that they're both. Yeah, they're there. Yeah, they're there. Okay, that's what I want. Yeah. Okay, let's start two. again. Dage na te na ka dhinna. One, two, three. Om Shri. Om Shri Ram Jai 
So much joy. It works every time. Hmm. Mm. So will you write into the chat in live here on Zoom or in the Facebook group or on the replay if you're watching the replay? How did that go? We scale to one to three. Type, t drop a three if it felt pretty comfortable, felt joyful. Um, mm. Maybe little things here and there, but overall felt really good. Type a three. And a two and a one. One is I'm really lost. And two is somewhere in between. So let us know how that went. Three is felt pretty comfortable. Cool, Gabrielle. If I keep practicing, I know, I know where to go. I know what to do. Mm-hmm. Excellent, Crystal. Nice, Hannah. All right, Gaudi G. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Sky. Thanks for letting us know. <clears throat> okay, wonderful. One thing you can do, Sky, is um, um, 
not play harmonium and just clap along with the recording. Mm -hmm. And that will help you to mentalize and sense when do you come in. Um, and particularly when you're clapping, try to listen to the tabla in the background and really, really hone in on the tabla and notice the pattern of the tabla and then notice when does Sheila's voice come in and what part of the pattern of the tabla. And it might even help if you count to yourself, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, own, right? So that yeah. you, can, you can feel that that entry beat is at the end of the measure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. Great. Yay. So we're going to be back uh, tomorrow, same time. And we're going to invite um, some volunteers uh, to sing off mute. And please don't, that's, I know that sounds a little scary. <laughs> but it's actually a wonderful way to let your voice be heard in this Zoom room container um, and, and just be celebrated for coming this far in this, in this few days and learning this kirtan. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be tomorrow. I'll send you the Zoom link and a little more information. And just remember, like, if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's not compulsory. You can show up and just hear other people and celebrate them and, and cheer them on. And it's only if, 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 if you volunteer. So um, nobody will be put in the hot seat unless they want to. <laughs> and we'll also share another kirtan or two for the goddess. We'll just chant and you can sing along with us for our Navaratri. Um, and Puja, Puja Singh will also, our um, They're gonna sing? beautiful instructor will also come in and wow. share a chant tomorrow. Lucky you. At, at the kirtan tomorrow. So that'll be same time. And... Um, so today I want to end by um, chanting. Okay, so uh, Hannah, can we get the dyads for third and fourth lines too? So there are none. Oh, I wanted to talk about that, actually, because yesterday there was questions about intermediate. And again, I hadn't gone over it in a long time. And I, I, I watched the videos of the intermediate last night. And I want to show you something that will help you if you're, if you're having an issue with the, the fingering of getting your hand to do the, um, the switch from the saw through paw and then get the extension notes all the way up to high saw. I think Gabriella had a question about that. Yeah. Remember, I was showing you one, two, three, under with thumb, and that actually is a good thing, but it's not necessary for our lesson um, unless you're just playing the melody. But when we do this intermediate, what we do is we hold down saw as a drone the whole time and then switch the f second, third, and fourth, and fifth fingers. We, we pivot them up so that the um, f f uh, second finger is on pa. And then you get pa, da, ni, sa with the other. So why don't we just show that pivot real quick? Do you want to switch? No, you can do. Oh. You can do. So I'll just talk you through it. Okay. Um, switch the um, smarter mandala, I mean the um, saw slider, thank you. Line it up a little bit better. A little, that, that should be fine, yeah, okay. Okay, so she'll play um, sa Sarigamapa with your, there you go, one, two, three, four, five. And then um, all she Sheila does is switch out her fifth finger for her second finger. There we go. And now the three fingers, um, fingers three, four, five are free to grab. And I did mention that yesterday, but I just didn't show you the pivot. So try to keep paw down and just switch the finger. Switch the finger back to pinky. And then switch to index. Notice the paw never comes up when she pivots. That is the, that's what you want to get done. If you can get that, and then you get that in time, like, here, do this, Sheila. I'll count to four, and on beat four, switch to switch your fingers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, switch back. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. 
So being able to pivot out and trade out a finger when you need to be able to grab more notes of a melody, you, you just pivot out a finger for another finger that frees up other fingers <laughs> so that you can grab the notes you need to grab. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, so Hannah, third and fourth lines, we teach with melody with drone, not with dyads. Um, the melody is moving around a lot and the di dyads just weren't something we naturally felt drawn to make for that for those lines. So we, we could write dyads, but we really wanted to keep this um, even the intermediate, we wanted to keep it super accessible and we wanted it to fit into our, our method of teaching yeah. so that it was yeah. a good introduction. So not right. yeah, not a uh, a melody that we would necessarily play dyads for, but the beginning level melody is. Bill, this is a good question. Are there is there significant of the names of the bowls, do they each have a slightly different sound or based on where they are played on the drum? Absolutely. So each sound of the drum has a, has a name or a bowl, and, um, and, and, it, that's and, where and the, it correlates directly to the sound on the drum. And that's where the bowl comes from, is the sound of the drum. Yeah. Yeah. So dha is a lower sound. Dha ge, lower sounds. Nati, ti is a higher sound. Naka, those are higher sounds. Dinna is a lower sound. And you can really hear it when yeah. you when you play the bowl, when you play the the um, the tala. Let's put the tala back on. No manjira. Yeah, let me slow it down a little bit. Dage nati naka dinna dage. So it is, yeah. it is literally um, as close to the sound of the drum as, well, I mean, you could really, you could really ham it up and, and make your mouth, your voice sound more like the drum. But in terms of, of, of a syllable that can represent the strike, the drum strikes, they've got, it's really accurate. Yes. Yeah, so wonderful practice would be to throw on the tabla, put it through speakers. So you can hear the low end, because typically phones don't recreate the low end, the low frequencies very well. Put it through a Bluetooth speaker or something. And just listen. Just move with it. Meditate on it until you start to actually hear the bowls in the sound of the tabla, mm -hmm. in, the, in the tala, in the, um, it's called a teka, which is like the groove. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, then you, can, then you can really feel it, hear it and feel it, speak it. Mm -hmm. Move with it. <laughs> all right congratulations well, you made it you totally did it and um, we're really 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 excited for to share with you how you can continue working with us we're really excited to come and sing with you tomorrow and have just a blast together and um, yeah. so thanks again thanks again for being here but it's not the end no. The goodness just keeps going. Yes. And even for today, it's not the end quite yet. We're going to do a little chanting to close. So we'll start. We're going to chant to Durga, Goddess Durga, who we're celebrating and honoring during Navaratri right now. Should we do this one? Dum Durga? Yeah, but let's start with the Ganesha. Okay. So we'll start with chanting to Ganesha, then we'll chant to Durga. And today for the mantra chanting, I'm going to show you a new dyad to use. So we show my hands. I will. I gave him a preview of this yesterday. Mm. Did you check up Gapa or? We just sang Ga. We didn't. Okay. We didn't so the melody we're going to use for each mantra is one mantra on Ga, the first repetition on Ga, second repetition of the mantra on Re, and then third repetition on Sa. So it will go Ga. Om Gam Ganapataye. Then Re, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha, and then Sa, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Okay, and that will be the same pattern for Om Dum Durga Ye Namaha. So Ga, Re, and Sa. That's the melody. That's what we'll sing. 
Now we're gonna use also a drone note of pa, and we're gonna hold pa down during that at the same time. So here's ga and pa together. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Now you're gonna keep pa as a drone note, keep it playing. Lift up your ga and play your re. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Then keeping pa down as the drone, lift up your re and play sa. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Let's try it together. Ga. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Lift up third finger, play second on re. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Lift up second, play sa with one. Om gam ganapataye namaha. I'm going to pause here for a moment. So we are now switching into the mode of mantra chanting. So not kirtan, we're, ch we're chanting mantras now. And so we're not going to use tabla or keharva. We're singing uh, in unison um, in kind of a slow contemplative way. Okay, and you can actually stretch this out and go as slow as you want. You could go. Om gam ganapataye namaha. If you want to make it really meditative, or you can go fast. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Om gam ganapataye namaha. Om gam. And you could go as many times as you want. Set a timer for a number of minutes or go 108 times with a friend, with the beads, however you want to do it. This is just a nice way to support mantra chanting, however you may practice mantra as japa or as um, chanting out loud with the melody, however. So this is just a way that we like to chant together in groups. We'll sing and play all together. We're going to do three more times, Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Then we're going to do Om Dum Durga Ye Namaha. Let me put that on the screen. Which is salutations to Goddess Durga. We're going to do nine times together to honor the nine nights of Navaratri, of which we're in the fifth right now. Okay, let's go. Gam Ganapataye Namaha. So hold your first dyad down, which is Ga and Pa, together. And inhale. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. for joining us today and um, we will see you in the Facebook group in the comments or on the videos and we'll see you hopefully tomorrow again if you can make it take good care everyone have a wonderful rest of your day take care, bye Joaquin everybody. bye Hannah bye Gabriella Breakfast. bye Crystal bye Bill bye Desi bye Brett bye Sky. bye Natalie take care bye, bye Varsha What's that? What is happening tomorrow? I thought that today was the last day.
We, today's the last day of training, but we're adding a bonus live stream tomorrow. A bonus live stream tomorrow, same time, same place, yep. same link. But we'll, I'll send you the we'll, link again. We'll do kirtan. We're gonna tomorrow. sing the kirtan together and, and also um, let you know how you can continue on. Yes. Yep. Answer questions. So same time, same place tomorrow. Just a bonus live stream session. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yes, of course, Desi. Yes, tomorrow's will be live stream recorded into the group. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Take care. Take care. Bye. With hi. Bakari G. <laughs> Yay. Bye, everyone. Oh, bye. <laughs>